So now we can move on to the first package. Um, and what I tend to do sometimes is also keep the Xorg um, tar file separate as well. Um, so what I think I'll do is I'm going to get the links up. Copy this URL. Um, shall I? The only thing is it gets a bit annoying because you're moving backwards and forwards. I might ignore it this time actually. Just copy all the um, tarballs into the same place. The, the reason why I do it sometimes is because although we've got, I don't know, roughly 40 um, packages there and patches, we'll be installing hundreds. So if you want to look down them, a uh, list of um, tarballs that you've already installed, you'll have to use less to, to page it, less or more to page it to find it or you know do wildcards because um, we will have screenfuls of of um, tarballs downloaded it's, especially with X windows as you saw it's going to be a hundred or more that are going to be downloaded so I will just put them all into there okay so let's press D for download save it to disk left arrow to go back and dependencies well this this is more guided this this section of the book so you can see the Excel build environment we've already got that um, installed just to be sure I'm going to source the ETC profile and that should configure everything for me so if I do set and I won't do that well you we can see at the end there actually the two important prefixes, um, two important variables, XOR config and XOR prefix are set. So that's the main thing. So we're all right with that. So it looks like all we need to do to start off with is this configure command with the configure string in, that's held in that variable. Um, so what's this package called? Util macros. Let's extract it. You can see how small it is run the configure so that's done there's a warning there about unrecognized options you can ignore that that's not going to cause a problem there's no test suite and then simply as the root user we just do make install and it's that simple it's quite a simple package so sudo make install and that's the first xorg package completed get rid of that and move on to the next bit xorg 7 is a freely redistributable open source implementation of the X window system and so we've read all this um, what did I select the wrong yeah sorry I've gone to previous next I was going to say we look like we've already done that xorg proto so once again go down to the link D press enter to save it enter again to accept the file name left arrow to go back required util macros well, we'll just install that and then we've got some optional um, packages here and it does say um, there to build additional documentation um, so I'm not going uh, to build additional documentation. Let's just check. Um, yeah, documentation is good. Any additional documentation is good. Um, I just don't want to get involved in too deep a dependency. This FOP I know does require quite a few dependencies. Yeah, Apache Ant, which means Java. So I would say um, 
Uh, yeah, I don't know because the Exorc documentation can be really useful. Although you could arguably look at it up, look it up on the internet. Um, yes, this is what I was just going to suggest that I might do actually. Um, where it's got this note here, there's a reciprocal dependency with FOP uh, 2.6. If you wish to build the documentation, you'll need to reinstall the protocol headers after the installation is complete and FOP has been installed. Um, so that might be a thing to do. Oh yes, and I haven't marked off the util macros in my paper copy. So I should do that now, because I've just remembered. Um, so that might be the thing to do, is to install the protocol headers now without any of these dependencies, and then come back after FOP has been installed, probably when the graphical environment has been installed, um, because as you saw, it needs Ant, and Ant needs Java, and Java needs X Windows, so it's, that's probably the reciprocal dependency it's talking about, actually. Um, so I'm immediately going to put a, a big R next to my XOR Proto, and the little note saying after Java has been installed. So for now, I'm just going to install this as it is, and there won't be any documentation. So this is Xorg Proto. And let's start installing it. Looks like we create a separate build directory. Um, now, before I copy this, I'm just going to get the graphic browser up to see if there are any additional op options that we might want to add in, as mentioned. And no, there isn't. So we can just copy these instructions as they are. So that's everything I've got highlighted. So paste that in. Press Enter. Um, no work to do. That's interesting. That didn't look quite right to me, but it seems to have run everything. It did a maze on, and then a ninja. So they are just headers, so maybe that's why there's nothing extra to do. It looks a bit strange to me, but let's try running ninja install. In fact, we can copy all of these in as the root. Uh, yep. So let's paste that in. Yeah, it's just copying some, some files. Obviously, didn't have anything to do to them. So let's come back out to the unprivileged user. And that's the end of that package. So let's tidy that up. And we can move on. So the next is libxau. So download. Save it. So again, required is Xorg Proto, which we just installed. Let's extract that. One thing you will find is you're going to have loads of um, tarballs called lib something. So as I've just done there, I've typed lib, press tab, and it's not done anything because, well, you can see there's already eight files meshing. There's going to be probably 30 or more eventually. So you will need to know the names of the library that you wish to extract. And some do get quite similar names, you do have to be careful. And even I think there's some libraries that are in the BLFS book that have got, they are the same package, just different versions for whatever reason. So you do have to be careful um, that you um, extract the right version. 
So once again, we've got to configure and make. As you can see, they're fairly straightforward, these instructions. They're just complicated by the fact that there's loads of little um, files and packages to install. All done. As Oh, we've got some tests here we can run, so let's do that. Make check. Looks like that's a pass. So we can now install as the root user. And that's done. So I'll cross that off. And move next on to libx dmcp. Oops, what have I done there? Right, down the page, press the space bar instead of enter. Or D even. So save that to disk. So I'll copy this command ready. Extract it lib capital X DM CP paste the build instructions in and we'll just check there's no other no there's no other information, no other options for the configure command. Okay, back again to find out how to install it, and it's a simple make install. And that's that package done. So I'll cross that off as well and move on to XCB Proto. So let's see what dependencies are. libxml, which is required to run the test. So I'm going to go into there. Um, let's see where what chapter that's in. Chapter 9, General Libraries. libxml. libxml2, that's it. Right, okay, so we've not installed this one. Uh, let's see, additional downloads, optional dependencies, ICU 69C below. All oh, right, allows better Unicode support, so that might be a good thing to do. So let's check ICU 69, which is also under Chapter 9. Yeah, we haven't installed that one yet either. See what else this requires. Optional LLVM, LLVM with CLang. I think LLVM is required at some point. Um, I have a note here: if CLang++ is available, it will be used in the mistaken belief that G++ might not support C++11. Even though configure is tested for that, if using G++, there will be a necessary warning in the configure. Building with G++ also takes longer than the estimated SPU shown. Okay, let's see what LLVM needs. Um, I'm pretty sure there is something that we... Uh, yes, there it says there, Firefox uses it. So, um, if we don't install it now, we will be installing it at another time. Um, that's got a load of requirements, so I think what I'm going to do is go back to ICU and mark this as a re rebuild after L LLVM. Just to pick up on that um, extra Unicode support that got mentioned. So I'll 
<coughs> excuse me, I'll download this now. Save the disk. And let's uh, let's extract it first. Okay, so that directory is just called ICU. There's no version number in it. Um, I'm going to look at this on the browser, so libxml, in fact let's get these tabs up, libxml, and then we're building ICU69, um, and as I say, obviously the mandatory packages, are the mandatory dependent packages I'll be installing because they're required, the recommended ones I will be installing. Um, but as I said earlier, um, earlier video that optional packages, I'll probably tend to want to install them unless um, there's a specific reason not to, or I'll just install particular patch packages that I want. Um, if I know that I'm not using something, then uh, I won't install it. But this, this, as I say, we will need this eventually anyway for, uh, as it mentioned, Firefox. So. Um, the fact that it will be installed, it makes sense to just re rebuild ICU later. Um, okay, I thought there was some extra options here, and there isn't. That's what I was looking for. So I'll I'll leave it up for now, and let's go back here. Grab the instructions, the commands for building, and I'll time this because I think it said it would take just under one SBU so let's see how long it actually does take which I think is about five minutes for this machine um, and I think test said it took a, a little bit longer so we'll see how that goes
Right, so that's taken nine and a half minutes. So it looks like the SBU I had must have been probably between five and ten minutes. Uh, the SBUs aren't ac that very accurate anyway. So uh, now we'll go back to the browser and we can run some tests with make check. Again, I'll time this because I think there was a mention of uh, oh, two SBUs for tests, so it could be 20 minutes or so, judging by the previous timing.
Okay, so that took 10 minutes, which kind of shows how, again, how unreliable these estimates can be for SBU. And they really are just estimates. It does say explicitly that um, it's 0.9 SBU, so it took 10 minutes. And then add 2 SBU for the test. Well, uh, my timings show that should be add 1 SBU for the test for a total of 2. So whether that should say 2 SBU for tests, including the build, don't know. But there you are. It just shows that you really have to take the uh, SBUs with a pinch of salt. Just use them as a very rough guide. So that is... ICU tested. So let's install it now with make install. Check there's no other no other instructions. So sudo make install and miss the L off. And that's complete. Like I said, I've got a mark next uh, in my list to rebuild it uh, when I've got LLVM installed but for now it's installed as it is so now I'll go back to libxml2 and download that Move that to disk. Additional download, optional test suite. This enables make check to do complete testing. So that sounds like a good idea. Save disk. Save disk. We've got ICU now. The old Python 2 module can be built after libxml2 has been installed. See Python 2 libxml2 module. Let's have a quick look at that. All oh, right. Okay. This is um, the modules page for Python. So all the modules, all the Python modules that are in BLFS, are contained within this one page. So um, I'm sure we will be coming back here quite often. Now, at the moment, Python 2 is not installed, so I won't be installing that unless we absolutely need it. So I'll copy the instructions to build Limit XML. Let's see if there's any other options. So I've got to add in with ICU and it looks like with threads. Yeah, with threads for multi-threaded support. Um, so I'll copy this bit first. Extract. XML2 CD into libxml let's just check yeah so straight on with the configure go back and add in with ICU, oops, with ICU and also add in the with threads option for multi thread support, which should improve the performance of the package. So I'll let that configure. And sometimes it's quite good to let the configure run alone, especially with added options, because some packages actually put a status out at the end to show what's enabled and what isn't enabled so you can check that the switches you've added are actually working um, this one funnily enough doesn't so um, although if, if it is of a concern you could go back and check the config.log like this and uh, we could search for for example threads and 
that's the configure command that's found there. Oh, it hasn't come up with anything else. So let's try ICU. Um, there's there something about ICU there. So whether it's that's the part that it's checking. Um, it does say result yes in there. So I guess that's a positive thing that it's found it and it's using it. There's some more stuff there. It's setting some switches for libs. So it looks like that's been enabled. So let's go on now. Let's go back actually and run the compile, which is make. Let's see how long this one takes. So a couple of minutes for the looks of it. Okay, that's built. Let's get back to what's the next. So we've downloaded the test suite, issue the following command. So let's do that. That's finished. To test the results, issue make check to and the output's redirected to check.log. A summary of the results can be obtained with that command. Test use localhost test passing of external entities of machine where where you run the test serves as a website, the test may hang. So we haven't got any web server installed, so we can just run this command. Uh, let's time this, I'm not sure how this will take. Um, we can actually follow this in another terminal. The back smell, of course, it is. Uh, check dot log. So tail minus f check dot log will allow us to see the output while it's actually running. And there's not a lot. All right, okay, it's just uh, woken up. It's still running. So I'm not sure what we'll get at the end here, but if it looks like it's finished, then I'll switch back to see if it has indeed finished. Could be it. Yeah, it is. So it took a minute and a half, and you saw the end of the output there. Uh, the right window there. It's just doesn't seem to have put out any errors, but we can examine it. 
much less. Check that log. And if I go to the end, that's the last bit. There's no errors there at all. Nothing output. In fact, there's nothing to say either way that it's passed or not, but there's certainly no failures, so that looks all good. Uh, let's come out of this now. So all that needs to be done now is to run the install command. And that's libxml completed. So I've marked that off my list. Go back to the web browser, press the left arrow, 